all right how's it going everyone sd here um today we're going to be trying out a, a new format that i've been really wanting to do for a long time um getting these mini reviews out to you guys as fast as i can uh but with something that's just like a little bit more entertaining um and so today we're going to be trying slides i've been wanting to do this for a long time um i actually taught myself how to make these slides and stuff like five minutes ago <laughs> not really but at least like an hour ago um so i'm brand new to it uh, I feel like this is something that you learn in, like, elementary school, but then haven't used it again since, like, the Clippy days, if you guys know what I'm talking about, if you're that old, I needed, I needed Clippy to help me. Um, but the main reason I'm doing this is because uh, this, this year I'm trying to get a lot more information out to you guys, and it's really hard. Um, I've never done this before. That's usually because I tackle so much content on Twitch, you know, we showcase over 300 games a year you know handpicked by me uh networked and reached out to the devs by me all by hand um and i i just barely have time to do anything else but this this year i really want to make an effort to get the information out there to you guys um so i've been doing these things on twitter if you guys have been following uh where i've been doing these like write-ups on games that i really care about that really stand out and it's it's effective and i really enjoy doing it but then I have to be very picky about what game. I can't do it for everything, so I, I'm very picky about the games, only the ones that really stand out. But a lot of times there's really awesome games that maybe are not at the tippity top, but like they're awesome and I want to get that information out there. So that comes this platform um, and this this uh, that we're trying to do here where I can talk about more games. And um, another thing is with writing, I can't articulate a lot of times. I'm like really bad with like writing words and trying to get across the energy or what I'm actually trying to say. Uh, in writing form, I'm a lot more vocal and uh, animated, I guess. Um, so I wanted to try this out. So the further, we're going to call it Just the Bullets, at least for now. That's the filler name, Just the Bullets with S, because it's supposed to be just very quick, rapid fire, straight to the point. You know, no fluff, real information. Just the Bullets, what do you guys think? Like the tagline, maybe we'll do something cool with it. Just the Bullets. <laughs> something like that I don't, I don't know um so hopefully you guys like it let me know um so today you can already see that we're gonna be talking about phobies god's bane and will you snail um three really cool ones that i checked out this week and uh i'm really curious uh what you guys think of uh, one um this format and kind of getting the information out to you um so you have a place that you can go you can just get all the latest information within like three four or five minutes um and yeah let me know what you think it's gonna be super jank again this is made to be like not super flashy eye-catchy bait but really just the straight info um so it is gonna be super jank again i taught myself this like literally an hour ago so bear with me that part probably won't change too much but if you guys have other things that you liked or want to see added for the next episode um let me know and maybe we'll do like one one a week or something like that so let's get started phobies was uh one of our showcases this week holy moly um and we'll start there so phobias was interesting um so they sell it as whew, check that out guys not bad right a tactical card collecting pvp um i highlighted card because it's not really like a card game when they say card game you're thinking like i don't know like slay the spire or hearthstone or anything of the above in this game i don't know if you really call it cards they're selling you on cards but really it's more of a grid based tactics game um if you've played games like advanced wars or anything like that you're in the right realm so it, it more plays like that and i'll show you guys okay this is actually working out so far let's go um so what you can see here is you have a grid where you're going to be playing your phobies these little like phobia creatures um and it's i gotta say man the reason i wanted to write this is because this game actually has so much charm right from the jump you're gonna have this guy named lippy and it's all voice acted and it's very like oozy and creepy kind of like um rocky horror picture show-esque kind of like that kind of vibe um and it's kind of talking you through things i gotta say it's so high quality none of it felt cheap or jank all the animations when they get hit when they attack when they die um everything felt really really good like super top-notch beautiful i love this it couldn't have really looked better um and so they're gonna kind of walk you through things clippy all again all voice animated and all this stuff and they're gonna be walking you through things how to attack and stuff like that again if you ever played advanced wars or anything like that um it's kind of like right up that alley different creatures have uh, kind of different move distances if they shoot if they can lob over things um and again it, it just plays very well here um and you can see they're kind of presented 
in cards um but that's only really to like show their stats and like present them um and so the idea here is you can see the keyhole on the left side over there can you guys see my mouse okay cool 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 so you can see the keyhole there um what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up like pretty much stepping over that keyhole and you can summon anything from your collection and again it's free to play um i don't think i stated that actually it's free to play and you're gonna be collecting these phobies um over time you know through playing pretty much you're gonna unlock them over time free to play style um but you unlock them at a pretty quick pace and then once you step over that you can summon anyone in your collection but you do need keys Imagine your keys is kind of like your currency or your meta in a match, anything like that. Um, so if you go first, you, uh, every turn you get three keys and you could spend that on summoning a phobie. As you can see in the picture, some of these cost seven. So what you would have to do is maybe summon like a one cost creature and then carry over two keys. So then the next turn when you get three, you actually go up to five, right? Then you could summon a five creature. So you can see there's some of the strategy there. Okay, am I trying to get like take board control? Am I trying to get some of my, you know, like phobies to take over the board here, summon some cheap ones maybe, and then save some keys to get like make a bigger play, summon a like a bigger phobie is the idea. Um, and so there's also gonna be landmarks that you're fighting over. You can see uh, on the map here, there's gonna be little things that you're controlling. As long as you control them, it's slowly damaging the enemy's heart. The main, the heart is uh, one of the ways to uh, to like play the game. You can either kill all the enemy's phobies, um, because there is a maximum number of keys, and that's the blue key that you're seeing here, um, or you can kill the enemy's heart. If you kill the enemy's heart, you automatically win as well. So you can see how you're going to be fighting over the land to take those control checkpoints, or you're going to be out positioning and out fighting the enemy's phobies. So there's kind of like two things that you have to look out for here. And again, I I love this concept. It was really awesome. It's really fun. Um, you know, you can't just like non-stop summon like RTS battle because again, you are limited on keys. There's a certain amount of things that you could summon. Um, there's even a certain amount of phobies that you're allowed to have on the field. So let's say, oh, I'll just summon a bunch of one cost and I'm going to have like 15 creatures. No, it will not let you do that. There's only so many that you can have on the field at the same time. I think it's like five. Um, so then once somebody dies, you'd be able to use the rest of your keys up to the maximum number of keys is the idea there so right there you have a grasp of whether the game is for you or not and again it's so beautiful you can see on the right there the animations the death everything is so freaking good I, this game actually blew me away another big pointer that i want to point out is um they have a couple different ways to play they have like a puzzle like kind of like puzzle mode they have a you know like a kind of just burst the ai practice mode they have an asynchronous mode so if you are a fan of games like um super auto pets anything like that right up your alley it's like you could start like 10 matches um you can't even do that in auto pets i don't think but imagine like a chess app you could start like 10 matches and then when somebody moves it takes their turn it'll tell you you can pop back into that match you can um, watch a replay uh what happened up until that point if you want a reminder and then you can take your turn right and you can have like 10 matches open so it's like a really like low stress like, you know open a bunch of them play at your leisure and those asynchronous things i love to see like toyed with and played with right now i think those are really popular um especially if they come to mobile like super auto pets just came to ios it's awesome right being able to just play at your leisure it's the same with the chess apps um and there's also another mode that's more like real time like 1v1 more like live against somebody so it has everything that you could want it's actually really awesome like it's so well done right out the gate i love it they also have like a league um ready to go so you can see like the leaderboards for the different modes where you stand on the leaderboards things that you can unlock over time it's it's actually sick I'm, I'm telling you like that's why i'm writing about it that being said there is one red flag and i believe that's here so here you're gonna see how you level up your creatures so here's a little bit of the dark side so it does have that kind of like gotcha mechanic you're gonna be playing and you're gonna be collecting cards at a pretty fast pace i will say and again the whole world and everything feels really awesome the ui is so fun but here's a little bit of the catch. You could literally upgrade your cards, which means that like my explosive sheep could be stronger than your explosive sheep. Um, so they can literally get upgraded over time so that when I use them in battle, I could have a distinct advantage. There's the catch. That's the one downside with the game. It's a pretty big downside. Um, that being said, it's something to keep in mind. So I've played games like this before. I played Clash Royale. I played these games where it's like really fun. I love the game, but every now and then you're gonna fight somebody that maybe put a ton of money into the game to like level up their creatures. And they might just have a distinct advantage over you where like you made the right play, but their card is super powered, you know? Um. So again, I haven't experienced this yet. And I believe those people that are paying to literally win, paying to level up their cards and stuff, 
Um, they'll eventually, I guess, be higher ranked, so it's not like you're going to just play them all the time, but it'll happen. Um, but it is something to, like, keep in mind, right? Like, if you're, if that's something that's really going to bother you, like, that is something that you might end up having to deal with. I will say the advantage is you could have, like, 10 matches open. So if that one match, that guy is super powered or whatever, and the matches don't last that long, um, and you, like, lose or there's no way you're going to win, it's not that much. It's not like you're fully invested in that game. You have other matches going. You're going to make that move, and you're going to move on and open the other match and oh, you got that tense match going so the i think the asynchronous thing kind of helps with that flaw it's a lot different that if you like sit down for a match you're invested in this match for like 10 minutes 15 minutes and this you know you're just taking a beating because this person has a distinct advantage it's going to feel a lot different than asynchronous you know what i mean so that's the review on phobie um let me know what you guys think again rapid fire but you should get a clear idea and that took a while i want to see if i could speed these up but um that should kind of get you the idea of what this game's about again you could do the tutorial i i really enjoy it but that big flaw is something to keep in mind again it is free to play i guess that's where they make their money um yeah next here we go phobies next up god's bane so in the same realm um of kind of like this pvp -ness theme that we have going on this week and i put finally a 1v1 auto battler I say finally because I like haven't really seen it done before. Not finally in a way where it's like, thank God, I hate the current auto battle. No, not not in finally in a way that like all of them are bad. Just finally in a way because I'm I was you know ready to see this take on kind of like one v one. So what I mean by that, if you're new to auto battles, is usually you play with a lobby, a lobby of people. So there's say like nine people in a lobby, and you're playing to the lobby. You're not really playing against one person. Like okay, let me set up this comp, and where do I sit in this lobby of people? And usually you're trying to get like top four or top three for a win. You don't just have to be the best. You know, there's a lot of elements in an auto battler. And this one is presented really cool. This game also blew me away. Um, so this game is not actually free to play. Um, it's it's a premium title. Um, and the idea here is the presentation is great. That's one of the things that blew me away. So the idea is I'm going to create a kind of deck of units, which are going to create my shop. If you're used to an auto battler, you get a random shop and you're going to be drafting and like buying different things from the shop to put on your board essentially um it kind of looks like the hollow chest thing from star wars and that's kind of how it plays and again the aesthetic and presentation here is stellar um so you're gonna be putting these units on the board you're gonna be fighting each other so what happens is when it's your turn you're gonna be moving the creatures around then your opponent's gonna move the creatures around then they're gonna fight and then you go to the back to the shopping phase and you're not gonna see each other do this this is happening at the same time and then everything's going to present itself and then the player that won like the round is going to move first and that's one of the big um balancing acts of the game is that's how like the loser gets their comeback and their advantage so they get to move second they get to react to how you move and how you set up your board so then they can get their advantage and then everything plays out then the loser you know again moves second and that's how it works and then you go back to the shopping phase um so that's kind of like the quick thing. You can see it here, how the movement phase works. So the winner would move first and then the loser is going to react and kind of like how it's going to work, right? It'll, the game will try to show you who they're going to target. Um, and again, this is all going to happen automatically. You're going to tell your units like where to move and stuff like that. Um, they're going to stop and then the round's going to start. Everyone's going to automatically start fighting kind of like based on where you position them. Um, and then again, the main hero, like if you win, is going to attack the enemy hero. The presentation is really adorable. You're going to see their health go away. The more units that... Um, you have left if you win the round when the opponent dies the more units you have left the more power you have on the board the more damage you're going to do that's how it's presented um you can have to have up to five units on the board and again i like it that it's um that you can't just have a million units to try to keep track of i like that it's bite size the game also tries to do this economy thing where if you have over three mana left at the end of a round you also get one interest so they try to do this economy thing and then you can get two interests by having even more stuff like that so you could try to gain an advantage that way. You have the little display on the bottom left to see like damage dealt, healing dealt. So try to keep track like in an auto battler, you know, style. Um, one of the big things here is um, you can see the shop at the bottom. It was presented with two units on the left, three spells on the right, and you're going to be drafting and then you can re-roll, spend another mana. Um, again, this is your money. Uh, spend uh, a mana to re-roll. You're going to be buying. So three cost units, cost three. Uh, the spell costs one. You can see it's very straightforward. Um, just like other auto battlers, um, as you collect multiple units, they're going to level up. 
So you can see the slots over them. When I collect, you know, four of this guy, he's going to level up to the next tier, the final tier, um, three to get to the first tier. Um, and then the same thing happens with spells. And this is the part that's pretty unique to this game. Um, your units have a spell slot. And this can really mix things up. And I think this is a big part of the strategy, right? There's going to be all different types of things here. Maybe uh, one that makes your unit hit harder or do a certain type of damage, but they're also weak to a certain type of damage. Or um, another one where I can give my tank reflective. So every time he takes damage, he reflects some of that damage back. Um, oh, if you cast a spell around me and you're right next to me with the spell, uh, I'm going to stun you after you cast that spell, right? And so this is going to play a big part of the game in positioning and how you're going to play that character for that match or counterplay your opponent. Um, and this was a really, really interesting take. I never seen that before. And even with these, you can level them up as well. So if you buy multiple of the same spell in a unit, it will get more powerful. I love this. It's such a cool take um, on the auto battler genre. It's it, again, the aesthetic is really awesome here. I'll show you guys a little bit more about that. So your collection is kind of presented in this cupboard and you're going to scroll up and down and the wheels kind of like turn. So you're you're uh, you're like they're almost like action figures will come up right and like this kind of like rotating thing. Um, so you have this like again presentation was really awesome here um this is where you're gonna make your deck you can see right above me you're gonna have five units eight spells and that's gonna create your shop in a battle and again you're gonna randomly pull from that shop um and so on the left you can have all your different types of decks um there's a shop in game so after a battle and stuff you'll earn coins and that's where you're gonna go buy your units so you can unlock them and have them in your collection which is here um so far in my experience you unlock the coins at a very fast rate i really don't think it takes that long at all to unlock everything in the game um you could probably do that in literally being modest like three days or something like four days maybe like um, maybe a little bit like let's just say a week like in a week time you could probably unlock everything just kind of like casual play not grinding um, I was unlocking things very fast. You know, if I ever wanted somebody, the max is like 750 gold. After a couple matches, I have it. Okay, let's go buy that character, right? Let's try it out. It, that's that's how it felt. It was just super fair. Um, again, presentation stellar. Um, here's like kind of like the, the main menu, which is kind of like your room. And then it was really cute to find out that you can pretty much interact with everything. You can pull these drawers out. You can knock these toys off the shelf, you know. Turn off the light, open the window. Like, again, everything is very playful, very cool. I, I love that. I'm a big aesthetic person. Um, And they killed it. So here's where you would buy units. Um, Over here is, you know, you open that to go into your collection. And then here's the playing field where the battle will happen. Um, Everything, again, presentation is killer in this game. They make it very fun. Even waiting for an opponent doesn't take long right now. You could always find a match within 20, 30 seconds. Um, but even in the uh, the waiting, like when you're waiting for a match, there's like a little mini game that you could play kind of like uh, where you're clicking on things and trying not to click on other things. And there's like a mini little mini game while you're waiting. And I'm always like, oh, damn it. I found a match, right? I just want to keep playing the mini game. Um, but again, I love these things. These are the things I kind of preach about, especially in a PvP game. It's really important that you keep a person busy and looking for a match, right? Um, and I give this tip all the time. Um, one of the biggest things you can do if you're creating an indie game that's a uh, based on multiplayer it's really important to keep whatever people playing looking for matches and playing um the worst thing that you could do is launch an indie game that might not be that popular that thrives on having other people playing and then you're just sitting there looking at a waiting for player screen right if i sit there and i'm looking for waiting for player and i'm staring at it for like a minute minute and a half oh my god this is a dead game all right and then you're gonna remember that and next time you go to play the game you're like oh, i'm not gonna find a person anyway you're gonna remember remember that right um, so the game's going to die out a lot faster in my experience from what I've seen than if you have a way to entertain the players so they don't even notice that they're waiting, right? So I'm playing this mini game, all of a sudden, like uh, 30 seconds go by, a minute goes by, two minutes go by, I find a match, I'm not going to notice the wait, right? And you're going to have more people open to waiting for a match that are not even going to notice and the player base is going to last a lot longer. This is so important for indie games and we still don't seem to grasp it. So that's a big tip that... You know, I'm kind of offering find a way to engage and entertain the players so they keep looking for that match so the player base lasts longer and it's not a dead game, as people would say. So again, aesthetic fire here. Um, the biggest thing with the game is, I mean, again, everything seems great. You can unlock everything. Premium, it's super fun. Um, is like just we gotta keep an eye on the balancing, right? That's the only thing I just keep an eye on the balancing. I I don't have any other critiques about it. Um, and then for me saying this, uh, I just, you know, March 11th, today is the, what, 13th. So two days ago, you could already see some balance changes. 
and the devs kind of explaining why they're doing what they're doing. What else can you ask for in this kind of game, right? Perfect. I love to see it. So if they keep adding content, they keep doing what they're doing, we're good to go, right? I, I highly recommend the game. Go check it out. God's Bane. Um, I'll be playing more on Twitch and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I give it a big thumbs up. Um, yeah, check it out. And the last game that we're going to talk about today is Will You Snail? Um, Will You Snail is super awesome. This game blew me away this week. It is insane. Um, so the idea is I thought this was going to be like one of those cheap little random platformers, if you will. Um, and when I played it, I was expecting to do like, you know, this little half hour showcase. Um, and instead, I think it's potentially could be one of my indie games of the year. One of my hidden gems of the year. I really do. Um, and so the idea is it's a precision platforming game against an evil AI, right? And so the idea here is you're kind of playing this almost like precision, you know, like boshy, but not as brutal kind of like platformer stuff with spikes everywhere and things like that. Um, and this evil AI is kind of like talking to you and heckling you and making random things happen around you to kill you. So it's not like you know, Celeste or something where you're presented with a screen and you're just trying to get through it, but instead you're going through it and then, you know, the spike that you're not supposed to jump into could randomly fall or spikes can come out of the ground or you're running on a treadmill and then all of a sudden um, the AI is called Squid. Uh, squid uh, makes the um, treadmill go the opposite direction randomly and try to kill you and he does all these things to mess with you and it's so hilarious and I can't really express how awesome it was having this guy i believe there's over a thousand voice lines in this game not repeating that's what i've heard like around a thousand i think this is a solo dev in sanity i can't express enough so we're gonna start from the top here we're gonna start with um the steam page even that i fell in love with let's go look at that so right here at the bottom of the Steam page, you can see this cute little section. And I love this. I raved about this when I seen um, I seen like two other games ever do this. It's like, here is exactly what you can expect from this game and whether it's for you. Right. And I love this. So like, again, this whole game and aesthetic and this whole dev just did such a cute package, even from the Steam page. So you can see all these games, all this list of things that the game has. And then under it, you can see this cute little chart like, hey, if you like most of this stuff, go get the game. If you like some of this stuff all right this game might be for you here's what i think you know if this is it uh like wait for a sale and if you like like one of the points then uh, this game is probably not for you straight up right like not trying to sell you on it i love this for multiple reasons one it's adorable lets you know what the game is and two um especially today's day and age um you have so many people that like buy a game on steam and then it's like not what they want or expected. It's like, oh, I bought this deck builder, but I was expecting a racing game like downvote or like, you know what I mean? Like, don't recommend. And it's like, and you literally, it sounds ridiculous, but you literally get this all the time. It's so insane. Like, what, what are these people doing? Um, it's like going in a Chinese food place and it's like, what the hell? Like, I was expecting pizza. Like, I want a pizza or like, you know what I mean? It's like, what are you, what are you doing? So I love this kind of stuff. I think more indie games um, developers should consider doing this. Um, I don't think it's a fix. You know, people don't like to read or whatever. And if they're not like really looking um, or it's not like easily accessible, they might just dodge it anyway. Again, I'm not saying this is a fix, but it's absolutely like adorable and could be another way to be like, hey, bro, there's, you know, the information's right there, <laughs> like kind of thing. Uh, and again, it could help save you from a couple negative reviews or not recommends that's really crucial to an indie game's life, right? On the Steam algorithms, which I get. So anything that could help, again, this, um, could be like a you know could, could like really help boost your game or not make it look as bad from people that like shouldn't have bought your game to begin with or have no idea what they're talking about so i i love this it was absolutely really it was so cute when i saw it um let's continue on here um so here you can see some of the precision platform there's gonna be different colors going on different um a variety of like levels and mechanics and I keep in mind that it's not just like hey jump through right um it's not like oh okay you could just fall here right this part's easy but like you, you also have to keep in mind that this ai squid is going to be kind of like talking to you and heckling you the whole time or making spikes appear um or like changing things up he's going to be like talking to you and trying to get in your ear right and it's and it's so well written it doesn't feel cheesy it feels awesome i ended up loving this character his laugh is so funny it, it, it literally blew me away there's squid 
this is like this sentient like just like smiley face thing that's gonna be like kind of like following you around the game and talking and it's very kooky it's very fun um here's how the levels are presented there's like i don't know a freaking ton of levels anytime that you go backwards in a level um it'll bring you to this screen so you can easily see hey was there more secrets um did i skip something because there's like different branching paths sometimes um, you can always come right back here by going backwards, right? And um, and then poof, you appear here. You can see if you're missing secrets. You can see if you're missing alternate areas. You can see if, you know, you want to come back later. Anything of the sort, right? And it keeps going like this. It keeps going. It's so well done. And again, this is just one of the bullet points here. Um, not only that, there's so much variety to the levels, right? Um, at one point, we're like swimming or at another point, it's like a rhythm. And he's like, oh, every so often you have to move to... Uh, I'm going to give you a random arrow and you have to move that direction, right? And so you're trying to balance getting through these levels and spikes, but you also have to be ready. Here comes a down arrow. So I'm going to have to move down here. Oh, I'm going to have to move left here. So let me get away from the spike. I need some breathing room, you know? Um, or we're like playing basketball. I have to juggle this thing over spikes and then shoot it into a hoop, right? It, they're keeping you on your toes the whole time. It never gets stale. I wanted more and more and more. Um, I got to say, and then the bottom right panel here is the boss fights in this game were actually so much fun. If you guys know me, I'm such a stickler for boss fights. I actually think it's like oftentimes in the type of games that I play, the weakest part of the game. It's like they they put a boss fight because that's the trope and that's the thing that we do in gaming. Oh, you're supposed to add a boss fight every couple levels, right? So we add a boss fight here. And especially like, don't get me started, but like, um, like in roguelikes and games that are supposed to be replayable, let's put like a stagnant boss that's the same every run. How is that re replayable, right? I, I've done this 500 times on all these runs. It's the same guy right like so don't even get me started i'm a big stickler for boss fights and oftentimes i hate them um every boss fight in this game has been very fun partly because it's very emergent how it plays out is very different um so on the bottom right we have a, a screenshot of like one of the volleyball matches spoiler um, and we're playing this little robot and the idea here is i'm knocking if i go over his side he zaps me and i and you know like and i die instantly and he's like oh you're trying to cheat are you and he's like heckling me right so then you start over again you're like throwing the volleyball over and he's throwing it back he's a beast right and the idea is you just got to get him to drop one ball to win and then you notice that he's like i don't want to spoil it but it's like super clever it's really fun um all and all the boss fights were like this none of them felt like oh, okay just learn this pattern like they all felt kind of like either kooky uh emergent and like if i had to do it a second time it, i would have to approach it differently because you know one of them is like oh i'm shooting at a boss but if i shoot past him i'm hitting blocks that are going to fall down and destroy the floor and then i have limited room to work with um they all felt fun engaging different um and i loved it i rarely like boss fights so again that blew me away um the game goes on and on there's so many secrets there's puzzles that are like well made um and the puzzles don't even feel gimmicky and we actually give bullet points to squid so let's see what bullet points you have here um squid is awesome again the ai is one of the biggest parts of this game you fall in love with this guy there's so many voice lines i'm gonna give you guys the one point where i actually knew i loved the game it was pretty early on we were about an hour in right and we're playing he's trolling me again the deaths are really quick you instantly restart trust me. like it's very fast paced it, it's not triggering it's not like oh you die i gotta go to the loading screen you know it gets very frustrating you die you're like instantly playing again you don't even have to hold, stop holding forward um and um the one the moment that the game grabbed me is i'm running through this treadmill part he's changing the treadmill and stuff and he's making spikes appear and making a squid's making spikes fall and stuff like that and i was like listen chat i got this i know how these games work right it's kind of just tracking where i'm gonna go right it's aiming in front of me and making a spike pop out i got this right so i'm like watch this so i'm going back and forth on my controller right i'm like looking left looking right to like confuse the ai right i'm like watch this i got it i got it right and then all of a sudden like a spike just falls right in the middle like right on top of me and i die and i'm like what the and then squid goes oh did you think that like you randomly button mashing and stuff is gonna like fool me like you're just looking silly and he said that right after and i was like dude this game is sick and that's where i fell in love i'm like the writing it's so clever right like here i am trying to outsmart the game and they have like a voice line for it ready to go and call me out on it at the exact moment and the game just keeps doing things like that it's it's so funny and again that's just a small part there's like a thousand voice lines he just keeps going squid is awesome you fall in love with him um this, the screens are straight to the point and a ton of fun again because we went over that it's very emergent it's not like okay this is the part where you jump over this you know like kind of like a typical speed run or a typical map 
it's more trying to react because you don't know how this AI is going to, you have to be ready and on your toes at all times. Love it, very exciting. The puzzles are sick, but optional. The, fu the puzzles are never forced. Now, these puzzles are really awesome. Um, again, another point where I fell in love is there was this room that looked very typical, kind of like you connect the power source and then the doors open and you grab this power up. But I couldn't reach the power up. Like it was a very simple room, the doors open, and then you have to get up to the power up and I couldn't reach it. So I'm like, oh, okay. So this is probably like just one of those games, right? They're teasing me. I come back and I get like double jump or something, right? Okay. And I find out that no, there was actually a puzzle to it. And there's a way to get up there is you don't need to come back with a power up. Like I'm looking at you Metroidvanias, right? There's a reason why I don't like Metroidvanias, right? Here's the part where we put bait and then you come back when you have the right power up. All right, one like Metroidvania 101, like very stale. Okay, we get it. No, it wasn't like that. There was actually a puzzle to get up there. There is no special power up to get up there, right? That kind of stuff. Like it was very awesome and you never have to do them. They're never forced. You could skip them. It's like, oh, it'll tell you right away. Oh, oh, just go this way. You can skip the puzzle if you want. Awesome. And these puzzles again were like, some of them were like a little bit mind, mind melt. Like they're not cheesy puzzles. They were really cool. So again, very, very fun. Boss fights are fun. We went over that. The boss fights are actually unique, actually fun and engaging and didn't feel like, all right, this is just like, all right, let me just learn this pattern real quick. <laughs> Level variety always keeps you on your toes. Rhythm, tower defense. Don't get me started on the tower defense. At one point, like there's enemies coming in and you have to defend a core. Um, and this happens a couple different times. You get to do tower defense and you're like running up to different towers and making them different kinds of towers to shoot AOE or snipe and even that i was playing on the hardest difficulty that was so hard like at one of them we were stuck for there for like a half hour and it was awesome i'm like holy like this is better than some of the tower defense games that came to steam that we i played recently like this game is this is so awesome it's not like cheaply made as a gimmick like oh let's put a tower defense part huh and it's just like some cheap tower like you know just to like get a rise out of you like no like it was well crafted it was so awesome again i can't rave about it enough um story was really fun never forced and did not slow the game down at all again yeah so true there was a really cute story you could always go to these checkpoints and get more of the story from like your sidekick character or like about squid and like you kind of like piece it together you find these different logs um and again it was never forced the game just like keeps it moving and it's there if you want to bite into it and again i did i'm not even a big story person but i always stopped at those things it's, again big big plus right um and that's that right like i can't rave about this game enough it was so awesome i highly recommend you check it out it looks kind of gimmicky i promise you this game is quality then i found like a hidden mini game at one point um like through the start menu and even the hidden mini game was supposed to be like a play on like oh you know people love seeing like uh score and numbers go up right and it's like this game where you just like go in circles and kind of like collect these things with like satisfying sound effects i'm looking at you vampire survivor and i played that for like 40 minutes chat was like oh my god i'm like i can't stop even this is fun it had really cool movement and stuff i'm like i cannot rave about this game enough like what an underdog i was not expecting it um so again if you want more uh twitch tv slash sd89 we're there uh pretty much every day you can find me come chat with me um and then there's twitter um please let me know what you guys think i know it's super jank and this was supposed to be like a quick the idea is supposed to be like bite-sized reviews and this has already been on for a half hour i could talk a lot this is why i don't do written reviews i hope you guys at least enjoyed um you can always skip through to the different things that you liked let me know um but again i just try to give you like be able to watch the certain part about a game and know whether it's for you know whether you know you want to pick it up or you don't want to pick it up um yeah i'm bad at this kind of thing i guess <laughs> all right guys i'm out of here love you guys so much later